The veteran stumbles upon an unconscious black teenage boy in the snow. As she revives him, he whispers two words that leave her stunned and set her on a dangerous path she never expected. What did he say? Before we get into the story, they comment below where in the world you are watching from today. The snow crunched beneath Diana Cooper's 34-year-old veteran boots as she walked through Jefferson Park. The winter evening wrapped around her like a familiar blanket. Cold and uncomfortable, but predictable. Just like her thoughts. Six months since leaving the military, and civilian life still felt like wearing someone else's shoes. Diana pulled her jacket tighter, watching her breath form little clouds in the frigid air. The empty park benches and silent swings matched her mood perfectly. A flash of dark color against the white snow caught her eye. At first, she thought it was a discarded jacket or maybe a garbage bag, but something made her stop. Through the falling snow, she made out the shape of a person lying face down near a cluster of bare trees. Her military training kicked in instantly. Diana sprinted toward the figure, her heart beating. As she got closer, she saw it was Liam Daniels, a 15-year-old black boy, unconscious in the snow. Hey, can you hear me? Diana called out, dropping to her knees beside him. She gently turned him over, checking for a pulse. It was there, but weak. His dark skin had taken on a frightening grayish tinge from the cold. Come on, kid, wake up. She rubbed his arms vigorously, trying to warm him. His eyelashes were frosted, and his lips had a bluish tint. How long had he been out here? After what felt like forever, the boy's eyes fluttered open. They were deep brown and filled with a pain that went beyond physical discomfort. My fault, he mumbled, his voice barely a whisper. Tears began streaming down his face, leaving warm tracks that quickly cooled in the bitter air. I tried to save my father, but I couldn't. Now they'll come for me. Diana's protective instincts surged. She'd seen that look before. In the eyes of soldiers who'd lost comrades, in her own reflection after particularly difficult missions, this kid was carrying something heavy. I'm Diana, she said softly, still rubbing his arms. Can you tell me your name? Liam, he managed through chattering teeth. Liam Daniels. You know, okay, Liam, we need to get you somewhere warm. Can you stand? He tried to push himself up, but collapsed back into the snow. Diana made a quick decision. Despite her own emotional walls, the carefully constructed barriers she'd built since leaving the service, she couldn't leave him here. Hold on, she said, sliding one arm under his knees and the other behind his shoulders. With a grunt, she lifted him. He was tall for 15, but dangerously light. As Diana carried Liam through the deserted park toward her apartment building three blocks away, questions tumbled through her mind. What had happened to his father? Who were they? And why were they after him? Most importantly, what did he mean by my fault? Liam's head rested against her shoulder, his tears slowly soaking into her jacket. His breathing was shallow, but steady. Every few steps, he would mumble something incoherent, lost in whatever nightmare he was living through. The snow continued to fall, erasing their tracks as Diana made her way home with her unexpected charge. She looked down at Liam's face, seeing both vulnerability and strength in his features. Despite her best efforts to keep people at arm's length since returning to civilian life, Diana knew she couldn't walk away from this. Something about this boy's pain called to her own buried wounds, demanding attention. Her apartment was just ahead now, a modest third-floor walk-up in a quiet neighborhood. Diana adjusted her grip on Liam, feeling the weight of both his physical presence and the decision she was making. Whatever trouble he was in, whatever guilt he carried, she was now involved. Liam wakes up disoriented. Liam's eyes snapped open, his body tensing as he found himself on an unfamiliar couch in a dimly lit room. The last thing he remembered was the biting cold of the park. Now, he was wrapped in thick blankets, the warmth almost suffocating. You're safe, a calm voice said from nearby. Diana sat in an armchair, keeping her distance. You've been out for about an hour. Liam scrambled to sit up, pressing himself against the far end of the couch. 
His eyes darted around the small living room, taking in the sparse furniture and the single framed photo of a military unit on the wall. I need to go, he said, his voice hoarse. But when he tried to stand, his legs wobbled beneath him. You're not going anywhere until you warm up properly, Diana said firmly but gently. And those injuries need attention. Liam's hand instinctively went to his side, where bruises bloomed beneath his shirt. Diana noticed how he winced at the movement and the way his eyes kept darting to the door and windows, the behavior of someone who felt hunted. I've got some first aid supplies, she said, keeping her voice steady. Will you let me help? Liam studied her face, searching for something. Deception, maybe, or pity. Finding neither, he gave a slight nod. As Diana cleaned a cut on his forehead, she noticed other marks, older bruises, a healing scrape on his arm. What happened to you, Liam? He remained silent for so long she thought he wouldn't answer. When he finally spoke, his voice was barely above a whisper. My dad. He discovered something at work, something bad. His hands twisted in the blanket. He was going to expose them, but they found out. Diana's hand stilled for a moment, then continued their careful work. When? Three days ago? Liam's eyes filled with tears. He told me to run. Liam's memories came in flashes, sharp and painful, like shards of broken glass. The cold metal of the dumpster against his back, the harsh yellow light from the street lamp casting long shadows in the alley, his father's urgent whispers, stay here, don't make a sound. The night air had been crisp, carrying the scent of autumn leaves and car exhaust. Robert Daniels had stood at the alley's entrance, his broad shoulders tense as he faced the approaching footsteps. Liam remembered how his father's hands had been steady. Even then, where are the files, Daniels? A voice had cut through the darkness. This doesn't have to get messy. It's already messy, Robert had replied, his voice firm, despite the danger. You can't hide what you've done forever. The first gunshot had shattered the night like thunder. Liam had flinched, pressing himself harder against the dumpster, his heart pounding so loud he was sure they would hear it. His father had moved then, positioning himself between the gunmen and where Liam hid. Run! Robert had shouted, and Liam had seen the flash of more gunfire, heard the terrible thud of his father's body hitting the ground. Sitting on Diana's couch now, Liam's hands trembled as he relived that moment. I should have done something, he whispered. Anything. Diana sat quietly, letting him find the words, at his own pace. My dad, Liam's voice cracked. He wasn't perfect. He worked at Carlton Industries for 15 years. Started in the mailroom, worked his way up to operations manager. Pride flickered across his face before fading into pain. He noticed things that didn't add up. Missing shipments. Strange payments. He started keeping records. Liam pulled the blanket tighter around his shoulders. He told me later that by the time he realized what was really happening, he was already too deep. But instead of backing away, he gathered evidence. Said someone had to stand up to them. Yeah. Tears rolled down his cheeks. He was trying to do the right thing, but... Liam's shoulders shook. I didn't save him. I just watched him die. Diana moved closer, placing a gentle hand on his shoulder. Your father made his choice to protect you, she said softly. He wanted you to live. He was all I had, Liam whispered, the tears falling freely now. And now these people, they're still out there. The evidence he collected, the truth he died for, it's all gone. Diana squeezed his shoulder, her determination growing as she watched this brave, broken boy carry the weight of his father's death. The truth was out there, and she would help him find it. Diana walked through the quiet streets of Liam's neighborhood, her military training evident in the way she scanned her surroundings while appearing casual. The morning sun cast long shadows across the cracked sidewalks as early risers headed to work. Her first stop was Joe's Corner Store, a small convenience shop where Robert Daniels had been a regular customer. The bell chimed as she entered, and an elderly man looked up from behind the counter. Can I help you? He asked, adjusting his wire-rimmed glasses. 
Diana approached with a warm smile. I hope so. I'm looking to learn more about Robert Daniels. I heard he used to come here often. The shopkeeper's face softened with recognition. Rob? Yeah, he was a good man. Came in every morning for his coffee and newspaper. He shook his head sadly. What happened to him wasn't right. What kind of person was he, Diana asked, noting the genuine emotion in the man's voice. Honest as they come, always had time to help others, started a tutoring program for the neighborhood kids right here in the store. The shopkeeper gestured to a small table in the corner. His boy, Liam, would sit there, doing homework while Rob helped other kids with math and reading. At the local diner three blocks down, Diana found similar stories. The waitress, Mary, remembered Robert well. That man had integrity, Mary said as she refilled coffee cups. Started noticing changes about six months before. She paused, her hand tightening around the coffee pot. He seemed worried, started looking over his shoulder more. But he'd still stop to ask about my son's college applications. Outside the diner, Diana spoke with a postal worker who had known Robert from his early days at Carlton Industries. He worked his way up honest, the man said, leaning against his mail truck. Not like some others there. When things started going wrong, he couldn't just look the other way. Each conversation painted a clearer picture. Robert Daniels had been more than just a whistleblower. He'd been a pillar of his community, someone who chose to stand against corruption despite knowing the risks. Back at her apartment, Diana opened her laptop and began searching news archives. She found the article about Robert's death buried in the local news section. The headline read, Local man dies in suspected gang violence. The article was brief, almost dismissive. It described Robert as a victim of a random shooting in an area known for gang activity. But Diana's years of military experience had taught her to recognize patterns, to see beyond official narratives. She studied the article more closely. No mention of Robert's position at Carlton Industries. No reference to his community work. Just another statistic in a city's crime report. Diana's jaw tightened as she read between the lines. The location of the shooting was nowhere near known gang territories. The article mentioned no evidence of gang involvement beyond typical patterns of violence. It was too neat, too convenient. Her instincts, honed through years of combat and crisis, screamed that this was a cover-up. Robert's death had been calculated, professional, designed to look like just another tragedy in a troubled neighborhood. Liam sat at Diana's kitchen table, his hands wrapped around a mug of hot chocolate. The steam rose in gentle swirls as he stared into the dark liquid, lost in thought. Diana watched him carefully, noting how his shoulders tensed and relaxed as memories seemed to wash over him. Something's bothering you, Diana said softly. More than before. Liam nodded slowly. I keep hearing Dad's voice in my head. One of the last things he told me. He swallowed hard. He said, If anything happens to me, trust your instincts. You'll find what you need. Diana leaned forward, her elbows on the table. Your father was trying to tell you something important. What do you think he meant? I don't know. Liam's voice cracked. I've been so caught up in... He gestured vaguely, unable to put words to his grief. That's understandable, Diana said. But now might be the time to think about it. Was there anywhere special your father kept important things? Liam closed his eyes, trying to focus. He had a home office. I used to watch him work there sometimes. A small smile crossed his face. He'd let me do my homework at the corner of his desk. Tell me about the desk, Diana encouraged, recognizing the spark of memory in his eyes. It was this old wooden thing, dark brown. Liam's fingers traced patterns on the mug as he spoke. He loved that desk, said it had character. His brow furrowed. There was this one drawer that always stuck. He'd jiggle it just right to get it open. Diana noticed how Liam's posture changed, becoming more alert. Go on, she prompted gently. Wait. Liam sat up straighter. That drawer... It wasn't stuck at all. I saw him once when he thought I wasn't looking. He did something under the desk, and a different compartment opened up. 
a hidden one. Did you ever see what he kept in there? Liam shook his head. No, but his eyes widened. That has to be it. That's where he'd hide something important? Diana nodded, but her expression grew serious. Where's the desk now? Still at our house. Liam's excitement faded. But I can't go back there. There are people watching it. Men in cars who pretend they're not looking at our house. His hands began to shake slightly. Mom moved us to my aunt's place after, after everything, said it wasn't safe. Diana reached across the table and steadied his trembling hands. Hey, look at me. She waited until his eyes met hers. You're not alone in this anymore. If there's something in that desk that your father wanted you to find, we'll figure out a way to get it. But how? Liam asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Diana's mind was already working through possibilities, drawing on her military experience. First, we observe, learn their patterns, then we make a plan. She squeezed his hands gently. We'll be smart about this, Liam. We'll be careful. Liam looked at her with a mixture of hope and fear. You'd really help me do this? Yes, Diana said firmly. Your father left something for you to find. Something he thought was important enough to hide. Whatever it is, he wanted you to have it. She paused, making sure her next words carried their full weight. And I'm going to help you get it. Diana and Liam sneak into his abandoned home under cover of darkness. The night wrapped around Diana and Liam like a thick blanket as they crouched behind overgrown bushes across from his old house. The street was quiet, too quiet, making every rustle of leaves sound like a warning. There's usually a car parked right there, Liam whispered, pointing to an empty spot near the mailbox. They switch out every eight hours. Diana checked her watch. Shift change, we have maybe 15 minutes. She studied the dark house, its windows like empty eyes. Show me the back entrance. They moved silently through neighboring yards, staying in the shadows. Liam led them to a small gate, its hinges groaning softly as Diana eased it open. The backyard was a mess of untended grass and forgotten toys, telling the story of a life suddenly abandoned. At the back door, Diana worked quickly with her tools while Liam kept watch. The lock clicked open and they slipped inside. The house smelled musty, like sealed rooms and settled dust. Moonlight filtered through dirty windows, casting strange shadows on the walls. Up here, Liam breathed, leading the way upstairs. Each step felt like a thunderclap in the silence, despite their careful movements. His father's office was exactly as Liam remembered it. The massive desk dominated the room, its dark wood gleaming faintly in the dim light. Diana pulled out a small flashlight, keeping the beam low. Where's the hidden compartment, Ying? She asked. Liam knelt beside the desk, his fingers running along its underside. There was a spot here. He pressed something, and a soft click echoed in the room. A small drawer popped open beneath the regular ones. Inside lay a single USB drive. As Liam reached for it, a sharp beeping sound cut through the silence. They froze. The beeping grew faster. Motion sensor, Diana hissed. Grab it, now. Liam snatched the drive just as headlights swept across the front of the house. Car doors slammed outside. Back door, Diana ordered, already moving. They raced down the stairs, hearts pounding. The beeping had become a steady shriek. Footsteps crunched on gravel outside. A deep voice called out, check the back. Diana guided Liam through the kitchen staying low. They could see flashlight beams cutting through the darkness outside. She pulled him into a small pantry just as the back door opened. Heavy footsteps moved through the kitchen. Diana held Liam close, feeling his rapid breathing against her arm. The footsteps paused near their hiding spot. A radio crackled. Upper floor's clear. Roger that. First floor sweep in progress. The footsteps moved away toward the living room. Diana squeezed Liam's shoulder and pointed to the door. Now. And they slipped out of the pantry and through the back door in one fluid motion. Instead of heading straight for their car, 
Diana led them through three different yards, circling around to approach their vehicle from another street. Only when the routier says, say, you're a blocks away, with no signs of pursuit, did Diana let out a long breath. Liam sat in the passenger seat, clutching the USB drive so tightly his knuckles had gone white. You okay? Diana asked, glancing at him. Liam nodded, his voice shaky. Yeah, that was, uh, that was close. But we got it. Diana reached over and squeezed his hand. Whatever's on here, we'll figure it out, together. Diana sat at her kitchen table, staring at the USB drive while her coffee grew cold. The morning sun cast long shadows across her apartment, but the darkness in her mind felt heavier. She hadn't slept since their clothes escape from Liam's house. The boy was still asleep on her couch wrapped in a thick blanket. Every now and then, he would stir and mumble something, his face tightening with worry even in sleep. Her laptop hummed quietly as she researched ways to safely access the encrypted drive. Each click brought back memories she'd tried so hard to bury. Her father's study had been filled with similar drives, each containing records of bribes, blackmail, and worse. Her brother Marcus had followed in those footsteps, learning to manipulate technology for their family's gain. Diana's hands trembled slightly as she remembered the night she'd discovered the truth. She'd been 19, fresh-faced, and eager to help with the family business. Then she found those files, proof of how deep the corruption went. The memory of her father's cold eyes when she confronted him still chilled her. It's just business, he had said, as if that explained everything, as if it justified the lives they'd ruined. She glanced at Liam's sleeping form. His father had died trying to expose corruption while her family thrived on it. The irony wasn't lost on her. Her phone buzzed, a text from Marcus. Heard you're back in town. Dad wants to talk. Diana's stomach clenched. They always knew where to find her, no matter how carefully she covered her tracks. Helping Liam would definitely put her on their radar if it hadn't already. She thought about running. She was good at that. The military had taught her even better ways to disappear. But looking at Liam, she saw herself at 15. Scared. Alone. Desperate for someone to stand up and do the right thing. Her father's voice echoed in her head. Family comes first, Diana. Always. But he'd meant their family, their power, their secrets. Never the families they'd hurt along the way. Diana stood up and poured her cold coffee down the sink. The morning light caught the USB drive, making it gleam like a tiny beacon. This wasn't about her past anymore. This was about Liam's future, about finally standing firm instead of running away. She picked up her phone and deleted Marcus's message without responding. Then she began setting up security measures on her laptop, preparing to uncover whatever Robert Daniels had died protecting. Her hands were steady now, her mind clear. Liam stirred on the couch, blinking, awake. Did you sleep? At all? He asked, his voice still groggy. I'll sleep when we're both safe, Diana replied, meaning every word. Whatever came next, whether it involved her family or not, she would face it head on. Liam's safety mattered more than her fears, more than the ghosts of her past. She looked at the boy who trusted her, despite having every reason not to trust anyone. In his eyes, she saw hope mixed with determination the same look she'd had when she first enlisted, seeking a way to make things right. This time, she wouldn't run. This time, she would stand and fight. Diana enlists an old military contact, Eric Monroe, to decrypt the USB drive. Diana parked her car in the shadowy corner of an abandoned warehouse parking lot. The pre-dawn air was crisp and still as she checked her surroundings. Old military habits kicking in automatically. Liam sat quietly in the passenger seat, his hands clutching the USB drive. Are you sure we can trust this person? Liam asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Eric saved my life twice in Afghanistan, Diana replied. 
He's one of the few people I trust completely. A dark sedan pulled up nearby, and a tall man with graying hair stepped out. Eric Monroe moved with the measured precision of someone who never truly left the service behind. His eyes scanned the area before settling on Diana's car. Diana squeezed Liam's shoulder. Wait here, I'll be right where you can see me. She stepped out into the cold morning air, meeting Eric halfway between their vehicles. His weathered face broke into a warm smile as he hugged her. Still finding trouble, Cooper? Trouble found me this time, she said, returning his embrace. They set up Eric's equipment in the warehouse's security office. The room was small but secure, with only one entrance to watch. Liam sat quietly in the corner while Eric worked on decrypting the drive. Hours passed. The clicking of keys and hum of equipment filled the silence. Finally, Eric's screen lit up with folders of documents, photographs, and video files. My God, Eric muttered as he opened the files. Your friend Robert wasn't just gathering evidence. He was building a case that could take down an entire empire. Diana leaned closer, her heart pounding as she read through the documents. Bank statements showed millions in laundered money. Photographs revealed shipping containers with hidden compartments for human trafficking. There were lists of corrupt officials, police officers, and business leaders. Dad knew all this? Liam's voice cracked as he joined them at the computer. Eric nodded grimly. Your father was thorough. He documented everything, dates, locations, names. This is enough to bring down some very powerful people. How high up does this go? Diana asked, though she already feared the answer. Eric pulled up another document. All the way to the top. City officials, judges, even federal agents. This network has tentacles everywhere. He turned to face Diana, his expression grave. These people, they won't just come after you. They'll burn everything and everyone in their path to get this back. Diana watched Liam as he stared at his father's work. The boy's eyes were filled with a mix of pride and fear, understanding at last the full weight of his father's sacrifice. Can you make copies? Diana asked Eric. Secure ones? Already done, Eric replied. But Diana, you need to understand what you're getting into. These people, they have resources, connections. They'll find you. Diana straightened her shoulders feeling the familiar weight of responsibility settling over her. Then we'll be ready for them. Robert Daniels died protecting this information. He died protecting his son. I won't let that be for nothing. Eric nodded, understanding in his eyes. He'd seen that look on her face before, in moments when retreat wasn't an option. I'll do what I can from my end, but be careful, Cooper. This is bigger than anything we faced overseas. Diana looked at Liam, who stood a little straighter under her gaze. In that moment, she saw not just a boy who needed protection, but a partner in this fight to honor his father's sacrifice. The evidence was secure, but their real battle was just beginning. Diana and Liam are ambushed by hired goons while trying to leave Eric's office. The first bullet whizzed past Diana's head as they stepped out of the warehouse office. Her military instincts kicked in instantly. Get down! She shouted, palinging Liam behind a concrete pillar. Three men in dark clothing emerged from behind parked cars, their weapons trained on the pillar. Diana's mind raced, analyzing angles and distances just as she'd been trained. The familiar surge of adrenaline coursed through her veins. When I say run, head for the red door, she whispered to Liam, who nodded with wide eyes. Ready. Run! As Liam sprinted, Diana rolled out from cover, grabbing a loose pipe from the ground. The first attacker reached her, throwing a punch that she deflected. She brought the pipe up hard against his knee, dropping him with a howl of pain. The second man was bigger, built like a linebacker. He charged forward, but Diana used his momentum against him, stepping aside at the last second. He crashed into a stack of old crates. Before he could recover, she struck him across the back of the head with the pipe. The third attacker held back, taking careful aim with his gun. Diana dove behind a forklift as bullets sparked off metal. She heard him approaching, his footsteps echoing in the warehouse. When he passed the forklift, 
She swept his legs out from under him. The gun clattered across the floor as they grappled. He was strong, but Diana had fought stronger. She locked him in a chokehold, applying pressure until he went limp. Not dead, but he wouldn't be following them anytime soon. Diana ran to where Liam waited by the red door, his face pale with shock. They rushed through the building's back corridors until they reached Diana's car. She peeled out of the parking lot, checking the mirrors constantly for pursuit. Once they were safely away, Liam's composure crumbled. His shoulders shook as tears streamed down his face. This is all my fault, he choked out. If I hadn't gotten you involved, if I had just run away somewhere else. Look at me, Liam, Diana said firmly, pulling the car over to the side of the road. None of this is your fault. Your father was a hero who tried to stop evil people from hurting others. Those men back there, the ones who killed your father, they're the only ones to blame. Liam wiped his eyes, still trembling. But you could have died protecting me. I chose to help you because it was the right thing to do, Diana said, her voice softening. Your father died protecting you in this evidence because he knew it could stop these criminals. We owe it to him to finish what he started. She gripped his shoulder firmly. This isn't your fault, it's theirs, and we'll make them pay. Liam looked at her through tear-filled eyes, seeing the unwavering determination in her face. For the first time since his father's death, he felt something beyond grief and guilt. Hope. Diana stared at the laptop screen, her hands trembling as she scrolled through the decrypted files. There, mixed among the evidence Robert Daniels had collected, were transaction records bearing the unmistakable signature of Cooper Enterprises, her father's company. Her stomach churned as she recognized the pattern. Charles Cooper had perfected it over decades. Shell companies, offshore accounts, and carefully disguised transfers that looked legitimate on the surface. She'd seen it all before, back when she still lived at home, back before she'd chosen to walk away. But it was the photo attached to one of the documents that made her blood run cold. It showed her brother Malcolm shaking hands with one of the organization's known leaders. The timestamp was from just two weeks before Robert Daniels' murder. No, she whispered, pushing back from the desk. The movement caught Liam's attention from where he sat reading on her apartment's worn couch. What is it, he asked, setting aside his book. Diana ran her hands through her hair, her chest tight with anger and grief. Everything she'd tried to escape, everything she'd joined the military to get away from, it was all connected to Liam's tragedy. I found something at the Yusant in the Iridoa Va. Some something I should have seen on coming. Liam moved to stand beside her, looking at the screen. Cooper Enterprises? I remember my dad mentioning that name. Diana took a deep breath, steeling herself. That's my father's company. And that man in the photo with the organization's leader? That's my brother, Malcolm. Liam stepped back, confusion and hurt flickering across his face. Your family, they're part of this? Yes, Diana said, standing to face him directly. My father built his empire on corruption. I grew up watching him destroy lives, watching him justify every cruel decision as just business. My brother Malcolm followed in his footsteps, but I couldn't. I wouldn't. She moved to the window, looking out at the city lights. That's why I joined the military, to get away from them, to do something good with my life instead of profiting from other people's pain. When she turned back to Liam, her eyes were filled with fierce determination. I want you to understand something. Just because they're my blood doesn't mean I'm on their side. If my father and brother are involved in your father's death, if they're part of this organization, then they're going down with the rest of them. Liam studied her face, searching for any sign of hesitation. But they're your family. No, Diana said firmly. Family doesn't destroy innocent lives for profit. Family doesn't murder good men like your father who try to stand up to them. She walked over and placed her hands on Liam's shoulders. I promise you, I will help you expose every single person involved in this, no matter who they are. Your father died trying to bring these criminals to justice, including my family, it seems. 
We're going to finish what he started. Tears welled in Liam's eyes as he nodded, understanding the weight of her words and the sacrifice they represented. Diana pulled him into a protective hug, her resolve hardening. She would stand against her own family to protect this boy and honor his father's sacrifice. It wasn't even a choice. It was simply the right thing to do. Diana and Liam evade another ambush, narrowly escaping with Eric's help. The silver Honda Civic's tires screeched as Diana took another sharp turn, her knuckles white on the steering wheel. In the rearview mirror, two black SUVs pursued them relentlessly through the rain-slicked streets. Hold on! She shouted as she swerved to avoid an oncoming truck. Liam gripped the dashboard, his face pale but determined. Her phone buzzed. Eric's voice came through the speaker. Take the next right. There's a construction site with multiple exits. I'll meet you on the other side. Diana followed his instructions, guiding the car through a maze of half-finished buildings and equipment. The SUVs struggled to keep up in the narrow passages. When they emerged on the other side, Eric was waiting in his weathered pickup truck. Quick, switch vehicles! Diana commanded, grabbing their backpacks from the trunk. Liam scrambled out and followed her to Eric's truck. As soon as they were inside, Eric floored it, taking them in the opposite direction while their pursuers were still navigating the construction site. Thanks, Diana said, catching her breath. We need to get to the bunker. Eric nodded, understanding in his eyes. The old training facility? Smart choice. Nobody knows about that place anymore. Two hours later, they pulled up to what looked like an abandoned warehouse in the middle of nowhere. Diana led them to a hidden entrance, punching in a code she'd memorized years ago. The heavy metal door creaked open. It's not much, she said, flicking on emergency lights that illuminated a sparse underground facility. But it's secure. No electronic signatures. No paper trail. After Eric left, promising to monitor police channels and keep them informed, Diana and Liam explored their temporary sanctuary. The bunker was cold and utilitarian. Concrete walls, basic furniture, and military-grade equipment that had been left behind. But it was safe. Liam ran his hand along a wall of lockers. You trained here? Years ago, Diana replied, setting up the emergency generator. This was where I learned to be a soldier, to fight for what's right. She paused, remembering the idealistic young woman she'd been. I never imagined I'd be using those skills against my own family. They settled into a small, common area, sharing a meal of military rations Diana had stored there. The familiar taste brought back memories of her service days, of purpose, of belonging, of fighting alongside people she trusted completely. My dad would have liked you, Liam said suddenly, breaking the silence. He always said actions speak louder than words. He looked at her with newfound understanding. You could have walked away when you found out your family was involved, but you didn't. Diana felt something warm bloom in her chest, cutting through the cold worry that had been her constant companion. Your father was a brave man, Liam. He stood up for what was right, no matter the cost. I'm trying to do the same. I know, Liam said softly. That's why I trust you. Those simple words hit Diana hard. Trust wasn't something either of them gave easily anymore. Not after everything they'd been through. Yet here they were, two broken people finding strength in each other's courage. She watched as Liam dozed off on one of the cots, finally feeling safe enough to truly rest. The weight of her family's betrayal still pressed heavy on her shoulders. But seeing him there, trusting her to protect him, made her path clear. Her past as a soldier, her family's corruption, Robert Daniels' sacrifice, all of it had led her to this moment, to this mission. Diana settled into a chair near Liam's cot, prepared to keep watch through the night. The bunker's dim lights cast long shadows, but for the first time in days, she felt centered, focused, ready for whatever came next. Someone within Diana's old network leaks their location. The bunker's alarm blared through the concrete corridors, jolting Diana and Liam awake. Red emergency lights pulsed along the walls as heavy footsteps echoed from above. 
They found us, Diana whispered, grabbing their pre-packed bags. Her mind raced. The bunker's location was known only to a handful of people she'd trusted with her life. Someone had betrayed them. Liam moved quickly and quietly, just as she'd taught him. They slipped through the emergency tunnel that led to an exit half a mile away. The sound of the main door being breached echoed behind them. Keep moving, Diana urged, her military training taking over. She guided Liam through the narrow passage, their flashlight beams bouncing off the damp walls. The tunnel felt endless, but they couldn't risk using the main exit. When they finally emerged through a hidden hatch in an abandoned barn, Diana's phone buzzed. It was Eric. Diana, thank God, are you safe? Someone compromised? She cut the call short. Anyone could be listening. Anyone could be the traitor. They hiked through woods for hours, avoiding main roads and staying under tree cover. Diana's thoughts churned with possibilities. Who had sold them out? Eric? One of her other military contacts? The circle of people who knew about the bunker was small, which made the betrayal cut even deeper. By nightfall, they reached a small motel on the outskirts of town. Diana paid cash and used one of her backup aliases. The room was basic, two beds, peeling wallpaper, and a flickering fluorescent light. But it would do for now. Liam sat on the edge of one bed, his shoulders tense. How did they find us? Diana paced the worn carpet, her jaw tight. Someone talked, someone I trusted. The words tasted bitter in her mouth. Years of military service had taught her the value of loyalty, of having people you could count on. Now those same connections were being used against them. But your friends, Eric and the others, they've been helping us, Liam said, though uncertainty crept into his voice. Diana stopped pacing and faced him. That's what makes this so dangerous. We don't know who turned. Could be Eric. Could be anyone in my old network. She ran a hand through her hair, frustration and anger building in her chest. They were my brothers and sisters in arms. We fought together, bled together. The betrayal stung worse than any physical wound she'd received in combat. These were people who knew her, who understood what it meant to stand together against threats. And now one of them had chosen money, or whatever they'd been offered up her, by her loyalty. Liam watched her with understanding beyond his years. He knew about betrayal, about having the ground pulled out from under you by people you thought you could trust. Diana sat beside him on the bed, her voice firm but gentle. We can't trust anyone but ourselves. She met his eyes, seeing her own determination reflected there. From now on, it's just you and me. Liam nodded, accepting this new reality. They were alone in their fight, but somehow that made them stronger. No more second guessing. No more wondering who might turn on them next. Diana checked the windows one last time, setting up basic security measures with what they had. The weight of responsibility pressed down on her shoulders, but she stood straighter under it. She'd lost her military family today, but she'd gained something else, an unshakable partnership with the brave young man who'd trusted her from the start. In the dim motel room, Diana spread out a worn map on the rickety table while Liam sat cross-legged on one of the beds. She traced their movements with her finger, trying to piece together how they'd been found. The bunker location was known to only five people from my old unit, Diana said, her voice tight with frustration. Eric, Sarah, Marcus, Joey, and Karen. Liam fidgeted with the edge of his blanket. What about the timing? He asked quietly. When did they find us? Diana looked up, noting the thoughtful expression on his face. What are you thinking? Well? Liam hesitated, as if afraid to voice his suspicion. It was right after Eric helped us decrypt the USB drive, and he's the only one who knew exactly what was on it. The words hung heavy in the air. Diana's jaw clenched as she considered this. Eric had been her closest friend in the unit someone she'd trusted with her life countless times. But Liam had a point. The timing was suspicious. No. He's also the only one who knew we were going to the bunker, Liam continued, 
his voice growing stronger. You didn't tell anyone else where we were heading, right? Diana shook her head, memories flooding back. She remembered Eric's reaction when she'd mentioned the bunker. A slight hesitation, a flicker of something in his eyes she'd dismissed at the time. I need to talk to him, she decided, pulling out her burner phone. Face to face. They arranged to meet Eric at a busy diner downtown. Diana positioned Liam at a separate table with a clear view of the exit, just in case. When Eric walked in, she studied his movements carefully, looking for signs of deception. Diana, he greeted her, sliding into the booth. His familiar smile didn't quite reach his eyes. I've been worried. What happened at the bunker? You tell me. Diana replied evenly, watching his reaction. Someone knew exactly where to find us. Eric's expression shifted slightly, concern, surprise, but something else too. Something that made Diana's instincts prickle. That's impossible, he said. Only the old team knew about that place. Exactly. Diana leaned forward, her voice low and intense. And you're the only one who knew we were using it. Are you accusing me of something? Eric's tone turned defensive. He glanced around the diner, avoiding her direct gaze. After everything we've been through? I'm asking for the truth, Eric. Did you tell anyone where we were? Of course not. But his response came too quickly, too forcefully. His hands fidgeted with his coffee cup, a nervous tell she'd never noticed before. I would never betray you, Diana. You know that. Diana sat back, her heart heavy. She'd hoped he would convince her would say something to dispel her doubts. Instead, his evasive manner and nervous gestures only confirmed her suspicions. I want to believe you, she said quietly. But right now I can't take that risk. Not with Liam's life on the line. Eric's expression hardened slightly. So that's it? Years of friendship? thrown away because of some kid's paranoia? The comment struck Diana like a physical blow. The Eric she knew would never have dismissed Liam so callously. Something had changed in her old friend. Something fundamental. I'm sorry, she said, standing up. But until this is over, we need to keep our distance. She walked away, feeling Eric's eyes on her back. At the other table, Liam looked up questioningly. Diana nodded, and they left the diner together stepping into the crowded street. The weight of losing another trusted friend pressed down on Diana's shoulders, but she knew they'd made the right choice. Eric's behavior had only confirmed their suspicions. He wasn't telling them everything, and they couldn't afford to take chances. Diana stood in the elevator of the gleaming office building, her heart pounding against her ribs. The numbers climbed higher each floor bringing her closer to a confrontation she'd been avoiding for years. Her brother Malcolm's company occupied the top floor, a testament to his success built on corruption and lies. The elevator doors opened to reveal a modern office space with floor-to-ceiling windows. A receptionist looked up from her desk, startled by Diana's determined stride. Miss, you can't just... Diana pushed past her, heading straight for Malcolm's office. Through the glass walls, she could see him at his desk phone pressed to his ear. He looked up as she burst in, his expression shifting from surprise to resignation. I'll call you back, he said into the phone, setting it down carefully. Diana, this is unexpected. Cut the act, Malcolm. Diana's voice was steel. I know you were involved in Robert Daniels' death. Malcolm leaned back in his leather chair, studying her with their father's calculating eyes. It's been, what, three years since we last spoke? And this is how you want to start? Answer the question. Diana planted her hands on his desk, leaning forward. Were you there the night Robert died? A muscle twitched in Malcolm's jaw. He stood up slowly, walking to the window that overlooked the city. You always were direct, he said. Never learned the art of subtlety. Unlike you? Diana's laugh was bitter. Always hiding behind pretty words while doing dirty work? Malcolm turned to face her, his expression hardening. 
You want to know about Robert Daniels? Fine. Yes, I was there. He was becoming a problem for the organization. He'd stuck his nose where it didn't belong. Gathered information that could have hurt a lot of important people. Diana felt sick. He was trying to expose criminals. He was trying to do the right thing. The right thing? Malcolm scoffed. There's no right or wrong in business, Diana. Only profitable and unprofitable decisions. Robert made himself unprofitable. He was a father. Diana's voice cracked. He had a son. And I tried to reason with him. Malcolm countered. Offered him money, a new start somewhere else. He refused. Diana studied her brother's face, searching for any sign of the boy who'd once protected her from schoolyard bullies. All she saw was a stranger wearing an expensive suit. Did you pull the trigger, she asked quietly. Malcolm's silence was answer enough. It was business, he finally said, spreading his hands, nothing personal. Diana stepped back, disgust written across her face. Nothing personal? You killed a man in front of his child and that's all you have to say? What do you want from me, Diana? Remorse, guilt, this is the real world. Sometimes hard decisions have to be made. No. Diana shook her head. This isn't about hard decisions. This is about greed and power. And you've sold your soul for both. She turned to leave, but Malcolm's voice stopped her. <laughs> you can't win against them, Diana. You're in over your head. Diana paused at the door, her hand on the handle. Watch me she said, and walked out, leaving her brother alone in his glass tower. Diana and Liam sat at the small table in their temporary safe house, surrounded by papers and laptop screens. The evidence from Robert's USB drive had revealed a web of corruption that stretched through every level of the city's power structure. Look at this, Liam pointed to a document on the screen. Officer Thompson keeps showing up in these reports. He's been helping them cover up their shipping operations at the docks. Diana leaned in, studying the evidence. Good catch, we can use this. Over the next few weeks, they worked methodically, choosing their targets carefully. Officer Thompson was the first. Diana anonymously sent evidence of his corruption to Internal Affairs and three different news outlets. Within days, he was suspended pending investigation. One down, Liam said, watching the news report. His eyes held a mixture of satisfaction and determination that reminded Diana of his father. They moved on to a city council member who had been accepting bribes. Diana used her military contacts to track the money trail, while Liam's sharp memory helped piece together patterns in the councilman's meetings with known criminals. When the evidence went public, the councilman resigned in disgrace. Each small victory gave them momentum. A corrupt judge was next than a shipping company manager who facilitated illegal trafficking. Diana and Liam worked together like a well-oiled machine, her experience and training complementing his insight and quick thinking. We are actually making a difference, Liam said one evening, sorting through their latest intel. They're scrambling to cover their tracks. Diana nodded, but worry gnawed at her stomach. Their actions hadn't gone unnoticed. The organization was losing money and influence with each exposure, their smaller operations were falling apart as key players were arrested or fled. Look at this, Diana pointed to her laptop screen. Three more corrupt officials had been arrested that morning. We're disrupting their network piece by piece. But she couldn't shake the feeling that they were poking a sleeping bear. Each success made the organization more desperate, more dangerous. She'd noticed more suspicious vehicles in their neighborhood, more unknown numbers calling her burner phones. They're getting angry, she muttered, closing her laptop. Liam looked up from his work, understanding in his eyes. You think they'll come after us harder now? Diana met his gaze. The boy who had been broken and guilt-ridden when she found him in the snow was growing stronger every day. But she feared what their enemies might do to break that strength. They've lost millions because of us, she said. We've exposed their people, destroyed their operations. They won't take that lying down. She walked to the window, scanning the street below out of habit. The evening shadows were growing longer, and with them, her sense of unease. Their successful campaign against the organization's operatives, 
had felt like justice, like finally making progress. But now, watching the shadows deepen, Diana couldn't shake the feeling that they'd awakened something far more dangerous than what they'd faced before. Diana's fingers flew across the keyboard as she dug deeper into Malcolm's financial records. The dim light of her laptop cast shadows across her face, while Liam dozed on the worn couch nearby. Something about these transactions didn't add up. The money trail led through a maze of shell companies and offshore accounts. Wait a minute, she whispered, sitting up straighter. A pattern emerged in the data. Regular payments flowing through Anxanshin and Reiner. There were a company called Graves Enterprises. She'd seen that name before, buried in the files from Robert's USB drive. Diana opened another window and cross-referenced the information. Her heart began to race as connections clicked into place. Jonathan Graves, the CEO of Graves Enterprises and one of the city's most respected businessmen. His company had ties to everything, construction, shipping, technology. But beneath the legitimate facade, Diana now saw the truth. The regular payments from Malcolm's accounts weren't just business transactions. They were protection money. Graves wasn't just another corrupt businessman. He was the puppet master pulling all the strings. Diana pulled up news articles about Jonathan Graves. His polished smile graced charity galas and ribbon-cutting ceremonies. He served on multiple boards and had connections to judges, police commissioners, and politicians. The perfect cover for someone running a criminal empire. More digging revealed how Graves had built his network over decades. He'd placed his people in key positions, using blackmail and bribes to maintain control. Robert must have discovered this before he died. The evidence on the USB drive all pointed to Graves even though they hadn't seen it before. The sound of Liam's stirring made Diana look up. He rubbed his eyes and walked over to her workstation. Find anything, he asked, stifling a yawn. Diana nodded, her expression grim. I found who was really behind your father's death, the person Malcolm answers to. She turned to the laptop so Liam could see. Jonathan Graves. Liam's eyes widened as he recognized the name. The guy who's always in the news? The one who donated that new wing to the children's hospital? That's his public face, Diana explained, but look at this. She showed him the financial trails, the connections she'd uncovered. He's the one controlling everything, the corruption, the trafficking, all of it. Malcolm and the others are just his puppets. Liam sank into the chair beside her, taking it all in. My dad must have found out about him. And Graves couldn't risk being exposed. Diana finished. She placed a hand on Liam's shoulder. Your father was brave enough to stand up to him. Now we know why they were so desperate to silence him. Diana turned back to the screen, her jaw set with determination. If we take down Graves, the whole operation falls apart. The evening sun cast long shadows through the windows of Diana's temporary hideout when a familiar knock echoed through the room. She tensed, recognizing the pattern from her childhood. Three quick taps followed by two slow ones. Malcolm's signature knock. Diana motioned for Liam to stay hidden in the back room before approaching the door, her hand hovering near the concealed weapon at her hip. Through the peephole, she saw her brother's expensive suit and carefully styled hair. I know you're in there, Diana, Malcolm called softly. I just want to talk. After securing the chain lock, Diana opened the door partially. How did you find me? Malcolm's practiced smile didn't reach his eyes. I've always known where you were. May I come in? This conversation should be private. Diana studied him for a moment before letting him enter. He walked in with measured steps, taking in the sparse furnishings of the safe house. You're looking well, he said, straightening his tie. Better than I expected, given the circumstances. What do you want, Malcolm? He sighed, running a hand through his hair, a nervous habit from their childhood he'd never quite shed. I'm here to help you, to offer you a way out before things get worse. Diana crossed her arms. I'm listening. Leave the organization alone, Malcolm said his voice dropping to barely above a whisper. Stop digging into graves. Stop exposing our operations. 
In return, I can guarantee your safety. He paused, glancing toward the back room. And Liam's freedom. He can start fresh somewhere else with a new identity and enough money to build a good life. Diana's laugh was sharp and bitter. You think you can buy us off? After everything that's happened? I think I'm offering you a chance to survive. Malcolm stepped closer, lowering his voice further. This isn't a game, Diana. These people, they don't play by rules. They don't show mercy. Like they showed no mercy to Robert Daniels, Diana's voice cracked with anger. An innocent man who just wanted to expose the truth? Malcolm flinched. That was... unfortunate. But... it's done. Nothing can change it now. You're a coward, Diana spat. You always have been. Hiding behind money and power, justifying evil because it's profitable. I'm trying to save your life, Malcolm's composure cracked. Don't you understand? Graves will destroy you both if you keep pushing. Get out, Diana said, her voice cold. We're done here. Malcolm straightened his jacket, his face hardening. You're making a mistake. A fatal one. As he reached the door, he turned back. You're playing with fire, Diana. You'll regret this. The organization launches a brutal attack on Diana and Liam's safe house. The attack came at midnight, shattering the quiet darkness with a barrage of gunfire. Diana jolted awake seconds before the first bullets tore through the windows, her combat instincts screaming danger. She rolled off the couch and army crawled toward Liam's room. Get down! She shouted, glass exploding overhead. Liam was already on the floor, years of fear having taught him well. His eyes were wide but focused as he grabbed the backpack containing the USB drive and essential documents. The safe house erupted in chaos. Flashbangs burst through the broken windows, filling the rooms with deafening noise and blinding light. Diana's ears rang as she guided Liam toward the back exit, staying low beneath the smoke. They're inside! A gruff voice called from the front room. Diana's heart pounded. They were surrounded, outgunned, and running out of options. She could hear heavy boots on the wooden floors, getting closer with each second. Suddenly, the back door burst open. Diana raised her weapon but lowered it immediately when she saw Eric's familiar face. This way! He whispered urgently, gesturing toward a dark van idling in the alley. I've got a clear route! Diana hesitated for a split second, remembering her suspicions about Eric. But one look at his determined expression told her everything she needed to know. This was the real Eric, the friend she'd known from her military days. They sprinted toward the van as bullets whizzed past them. Eric provided covering fire, his shots precise and measured. Diana pushed Liam into the vehicle first, then jumped in after him. Go! she yelled. Eric turned to run toward the driver's seat but stumbled as two shots caught him in the back. He fell forward, catching himself on the van's door. Eric! Diana reached for him. Despite his wounds, Eric managed to haul himself into the driver's seat. Blood stained his shirt, but his hands were steady on the wheel as he slammed the accelerator. The van lurched forward, tires screeching against the pavement. Their pursuer's shots peppered the van's rear doors. Diana pulled Liam down, shielding him with her body as they sped through the dark streets. Eric's breathing grew labored, but he maintained control of the vehicle, taking sharp turns and back roads to lose their tail. After 20 minutes of evasive driving, Eric's strength began to fail. He pulled into an abandoned parking lot behind an old warehouse, his hands shaking as he put the van in park. Eric, hold on, Diana said, climbing into the front. We'll get you help. Blood had soaked through his shirt and the driver's seat. His face was pale, but his eyes were clear as he looked at her. No time, he wheezed. They'll have people watching the hospitals. He grabbed Diana's hand, his grip surprisingly strong. You're the only one who can finish this. I was wrong to doubt you, Diana said, her voice thick with emotion. Eric managed a weak smile. You weren't. I did work for them. But seeing you fight for what's right, it reminded me who I used to be.
His eyes fluttered closed as he lost consciousness, his hand going limp in Diana's grip. She pressed her fingers to his neck, finding a faint pulse. Is he... Liam asked from the back, his voice trembling. He's alive but barely, Diana answered, already pulling out her phone. She might not be able to take Eric to a hospital, but she knew people who could help. People who operated outside the system. As she made the call, Diana looked at Eric's pale face, determination hardening in her chest. He had risked everything to save them. She wouldn't let that sacrifice be in vain. Diana and Liam sat across from Isabella Chen, a former accountant for Jonathan Graves' organization. Isabella's hands trembled as she spread documents across the wooden table. These are transaction records, Isabella explained, her voice barely above a whisper. They show how Graves moves money through shell companies. She pulled out another folder. And these are personnel files, names, locations, duties, everything. Diana studied the papers carefully. Why are you helping us? Isabella's eyes darkened. Because I watched them destroy good people. Like Robert Daniels. She glanced at Liam, who stiffened at the mention of his father. When I saw what they did to him, I knew I had to do something. Liam leaned forward. You knew my dad? He was kind to me, Isabella said softly. Always said hello, asked about my family. When I realized he was gathering evidence against Graves, I... I should have helped him then. Diana placed a comforting hand on Liam's shoulder as Isabella continued explaining the documents. The intel was comprehensive. Security schedules, meeting locations, even blackmail material Graves used to control his associates. Graves has a weak spot, Isabella said, pointing to a particular document. He keeps his most damaging files in a private server at his estate. If you can access that server, you'll have everything needed to bring him down. As they finished reviewing the documents, Diana's phone buzzed. A message from Captain Martinez, her former commanding officer. Meet now. Urgent. Stay with Isabella, Diana told Liam. I'll be back soon. At the police station, Captain Martinez waited in his office, his expression grave. Sit down, Cooper. Diana remained standing. What's this about? You're interfering with an active investigation, Martinez said, his voice stern. The Daniels case belongs to the police department. You're putting your job at risk, not to mention breaking about dozen regulations. With all due respect, sir, the police haven't done anything to solve Robert Daniels' murder. Martinez's face reddened. You're not a cop anymore, Cooper. You're a civilian security consultant. Stay in your lane. They killed an innocent man, Diana said, her voice steady. They're hunting his son. Someone has to protect him. And that someone has to be you? Martinez stood up, frustration evident in his stance. You're risking everything. Your career, your safety, maybe even your life. For what? For justice, Diana replied simply. For a boy who lost his father. For everyone who suffered because of Graves and his organization. This is your final warning, Martinez said. Drop this case, or you're done here. No more consulting work. No more access to department resources. Is that clear? Diana met his gaze. Crystal clear, sir. She turned and walked toward the door, pausing with her hand on the handle. But I'm not stopping. She left Martinez's office without looking back, her resolve stronger than ever. The captain's threats meant nothing compared to the importance of protecting Liam and exposing the truth. Diana and Liam work with the whistleblower to plan their next move. The safe house's living room had become their war room, with blueprints and documents spread across every surface. Isabella Chen pointed to the mansion's layout, while Diana and Liam listened intently. Graves hosts this charity gala every year, Isabella explained, circling the ballroom with her finger. It's his way of maintaining his public image as a philanthropist. The server room is here, on the second floor. Diana studied the security patterns Isabella had provided. How tight is the guest list? Very. But 
I can get you in. Isabella pulled out two elegant invitations. These are for Thomas and Sarah Mitchell, a father-daughter duo who regularly attend. They've already confirmed they won't be there this year, due to a family emergency in Europe. Liam shifted uncomfortably. I don't know how to act like some rich kid. Diana gave him a reassuring smile. Just remember what we practiced. Keep your responses short and polite. Most people at these events are too self-absorbed to pay much attention to others anyway. They spent hours reviewing their covers. Diana reached out to Marcus, an old military contact who specialized in creating foolproof identities. He came through with everything they needed. IDs, background stories, even credit card histories that would hold up under scrutiny. The security will be checking everything, Isabella warned. But the guards are focused mainly on the perimeter and entrance points. Once you're inside, you'll have more freedom to move. Diana's phone buzzed. The message made her stomach tighten. Immediate meeting required. Agency headquarters. I have to go, she told Liam. Keep working with Isabella on memorizing the layout. I'll be back soon. The agency's office felt colder than usual. Director Phillips and two senior administrators waited in the conference room, their faces stern. Sit down, Ms. Cooper, Phillips said, gesturing to the empty chair. Diana remained standing. I prefer to stand, sir. Phillips sighed. This isn't a request. We need to discuss your recent activities. She sat maintaining eye contact. The director slid a folder across the table. You've been harboring a minor without proper authorization, he began. Interfering with an active police investigation. Using agency resources for unauthorized purposes. And now we hear you're planning something that could compromise multiple ongoing operations. Liam Daniels needs protection, Diana stated firmly. The organization that killed his father is being handled through proper channels, Phillips interrupted. Your involvement ends now. Terminate all contact with the boy and cease your investigation immediately. Diana's jaw tightened. With all due respect, sir, I can't do that. This isn't a negotiation, the woman to Phillips's right snapped. You're putting yourself and this agency at risk. We've invested too much in you to watch you throw it all away. Liam would be defenseless, Diana replied. These people have already killed his father. They won't hesitate to silence him too. Phillips leaned forward. This is your final warning, Cooper. End this now or face termination and possible criminal charges. Diana stood slowly, her voice steady. Then I guess you'll have to terminate me because I won't abandon him. Think carefully about what you're doing, Phillips called as she headed for the door. Once you walk out that door, there's no coming back. Diana paused, her hand on the doorknob. I made my choice the moment I found him in that park. She walked out, leaving behind everything she'd worked for. But knowing in her heart it was worth it to protect Liam and expose the truth, Diana and Liam narrowly escape a coordinated attack on their hideout, orchestrated by Graves' operatives. The first explosion rocked the safe house just after midnight. Diana's military training kicked in instantly as she bellowed her off, where you're off the couch, grabbing Liam's arm and pulling him to the floor. Stay low, she shouted over the sound of shattering glass. Smoke poured through the broken windows as flashbangs detonated in quick succession. Liam's eyes were wide with fear, but he followed Diana's lead crawling toward the kitchen's back door. They had drilled this escape route multiple times, and now those practice runs were paying off. They're inside, a voice called from the front of the house. The sound of heavy boots on hardwood made Diana's pulse quicken. She recognized the tactical formation from her agency training. These weren't just Graves' usual thugs. These were professional operators. The realization hit her hard. The agency itself had been compromised. Three seconds, Diana whispered to Liam, counting down with her fingers. On zero, they sprinted through the back door just as more flashbangs exploded behind them. 
The cold night air bit at their faces as they ran through the overgrown yard. Diana had chosen this safe house partly for its proximity to the woods, and now that decision was saving their lives. Contact, rear garden, someone shouted. Flashlight beams cut through the darkness. Diana pulled Liam behind a large oak tree just as bullets splintered the bark. She recognized the sound of agency-issued weapons, another confirmation of her fears. They moved deeper into the woods, using the darkness and terrain to their advantage. Diana's heart ached for Liam, who was keeping pace despite his obvious exhaustion and fear. After 20 minutes of evasive maneuvers, they reached the emergency vehicle Diana had hidden nearby. She quickly hotwired it. Another skill from her past she never thought she'd need again. As they drove away, Liam finally spoke. They knew exactly where to find us. Diana nodded grimly. Those weren't just Graves' men. The agencies involved. That's why they were so insistent I dropped the case. They switched vehicles twice before dawn, using cash-bought burner phones to contact Isabella. She directed them to a new safe house, one unknown to the agency. Later that morning, Diana's phone buzzed with an email notification. The subject line read, Notice of Immediate Termination. She read the official document with a mixture of anger and resignation. The agency accused her of multiple violations, aiding and abetting a fugitive, obstruction of justice, misuse of agency resources, and gross misconduct. They're trying to discredit you, Liam said quietly, reading over her shoulder. Diana deleted the email and powered down the phone. They're doing more than that. They're sending a message. We're on our own now. She looked at Liam, seeing not the scared boy she had found in the snow, but a determined young man who'd grown stronger through adversity. This changes nothing. If anything, it proves we're on the right track. Graves has people everywhere, including the agency. What do we do now? Liam asked. Diana's jaw set with determination. We take them all down. No more playing it safe. No more worrying about regulations or protocols. They wanted to make this personal? Fine. Let's show them what we can do when we have nothing left to lose. Diana sat at the kitchen table of their new safe house watching the sunrise paint the walls in soft orange hues. Liam stood by the window, his shoulders tense with worry about her job termination. You've lost everything because of me, he said quietly, guilt heavy in his voice. Diana shook her head, a small smile playing at her lips. Losing my job doesn't mean losing the fight. If anything, I feel lighter now. She stood up and walked over to him, placing a gentle hand on his shoulder. The touch reminded her of her military days, how her squad would comfort each other during tough missions. You know, when I first came back from deployment, I felt lost, she said, her voice soft but steady. The military had given me purpose, structure, a clear mission. Civilian life felt empty in comparison. Liam turned to face her, curiosity replacing the guilt in his eyes. I joined the agency thinking it would fill that void, Diana continued. But something was always missing. I followed orders, played by the rules, but it never felt quite right. I she moved back to the table where their plans for the gala lay spread out. Now... For the first time since leaving the military, I know exactly what I'm fighting for. This isn't just about exposing corruption or bringing down graves. It's about protecting what's right. Protecting people like you and your father who dared to stand up against evil. The morning light caught the determination in her eyes as she studied the gala blueprints. The agency gave me resources, but it also gave me constraints. Now those constraints are gone. Liam joined her at the table, his fingers tracing the escape routes they'd marked. But won't it be harder without their backing? Maybe, Diana admitted. But we're more dangerous now. They can't predict our moves anymore. We don't have to worry about protocols or jurisdictions. She pulled out the guest list for the gala, pointing to various names. These people think they're untouchable because they've bought off all the right officials. They've never faced someone with nothing left to lose. And the whistleblower's intel had given them everything they needed. Security rotations, guest profiles, even the catering schedule. 
Diana's military training kicked in as she refined their infiltration plan, marking entry points and potential choke points. We're not just taking down graves, she said, her voice firm with conviction. We're exposing everyone who enabled him, everyone who looked the other way while people like your father died fighting for the truth. Liam nodded, and Diana saw a reflection of her own determination in his eyes. They worked through the morning, finalizing details, running through contingencies. Without agency protocols to follow, Diana could incorporate more aggressive tactics, ones that would have never gotten approval through official channels. By midday, their plan was set. The gala would be their battlefield, and for the first time since starting this mission, Diana felt truly ready for war. No badges, no bureaucracy, no boundaries, just the pure, clear purpose of bringing justice to those who thought themselves above it. Are you scared? Liam asked, watching her memorize the final details of their plan. Diana considered the question carefully. Not of them, she answered truthfully. I'm only scared of failing the people who are counting on us. She looked at their completed plan, feeling a familiar surge of pre-mission energy, the kind she hadn't experienced since her military days. Without the agency's restraints, she could finally fight this battle her way. The thought didn't frighten her, it exhilarated her. Diana adjusted her evening gown as she and Liam entered the grand ballroom of the Graves Foundation annual gala. Her military training helped her maintain perfect posture, despite the concealed weapons and tech gear hidden beneath her clothes. Beside her, Liam looked sharp in his server's uniform, his hands steady as he carried a tray of champagne flutes. Remember, Diana whispered as they parted ways, timing is everything. The ballroom sparkled with crystal chandeliers and the jewelry of Seattle's elite. Diana scanned the crowd, noting security positions and emergency exits. Jonathan Graves stood near the center of the room, commanding attention with his mere presence. His silver hair and expensive suit projected an image of respectability that made Diana's stomach turn. She circulated through the crowd, playing her role as a minor socialite. Meanwhile, Liam moved efficiently between guests, the perfect invisible server. No one paid attention to the young black boy carrying their drinks, exactly as they'd planned. When Liam passed near the main control panel, he smoothly placed a small device behind it. Diana watched the tiny light on her bracelet turn green, signaling that their whistleblower had successfully connected to the system. Package delivered, Liam murmured into his concealed mic as he passed by Diana. She gave a slight nod, then made her way to the stage where Graves would soon give his speech. The USB drive felt heavy in her clutch, containing all the evidence of his crimes including Robert Daniels' murder. As Graves approached the podium, Diana's bracelet flashed twice. Their whistleblower had control of the venue's screens and sound system. She watched Graves tap the microphone, his confident smile never wavering. The screens behind him suddenly flickered to life. Financial records, surveillance footage, and incriminating emails filled every. Diana sat in her favorite coffee shop, stirring her untouched latte as she processed the events of the past few weeks. Graves' arrest had made national headlines, and the subsequent investigations had exposed corruption at every level. Her phone buzzed, another message from Colonel Sarah Martinez, her former commanding officer. The FBI needs people like you, the message read. Strong, principled agents who aren't afraid to stand up to corruption. Think about it. Diana looked out to the window at the courthouse across the street. During Graves' preliminary hearing, She'd watch the prosecutors methodically present their case. It wasn't just about catching criminals anymore. The system itself needed change. Her thoughts drifted to Robert Daniels, who had died trying to expose the truth through proper channels. The system had failed him, just as it had failed countless others. Even with graves behind bars, nothing would truly change unless someone worked to reform the structures that enabled people like him. She pulled up the law school admission website she'd been researching. The path would be longer and harder than accepting Martinez's offer, but Diana knew in her heart it was right. She wanted to fight corruption at its roots, not just chase down its symptoms. Later that afternoon, 
she met Liam at the community center where he'd started volunteering. He was helping younger kids with their homework, something that brought a smile to Diana's face. The scared, guilt-ridden boy she'd found in the snow had grown into someone who wanted to give back. I made a decision, Diana said, as they walked through the center's small garden. She told him about Martinez's offer and her choice to pursue law school instead. Liam listened intently, nodding. You are going to be an amazing lawyer, he said, his voice full of conviction. You're teaching me how to fight back the right way. Diana felt tears prick at her eyes, touched by his faith in her. For the first time in years, she felt completely certain about her path forward. The right way isn't always the easy way, she said, but it's worth it. You're teaching me that too, Liam replied with a smile. You're teaching me how to fight back the right way. Diana stood at the podium, her voice steady as she addressed the gathered press. The morning sun filtered through the courthouse windows, casting a warm glow over the assembled crowd. She had fought hard for this moment, working with prosecutors and journalists to ensure Robert Daniels' story was told correctly. Robert Daniels wasn't just another casualty, she said, her hands gripping the edges of the podium. He was a man who saw wrong and chose to stand against it, knowing the risks. His evidence was crucial in exposing one of the largest criminal networks in our city's history. In the front row, Liam sat tall, his eyes fixed on the framed photo of his father that stood on an easel beside the podium. The picture showed Robert in happier times, his warm smile reflecting the man Liam had known and loved. As Diana continued speaking, Detailing Robert's careful documentation of the organization's crimes and his ultimate sacrifice, she watched Liam's expression change. The shadow of guilt that had haunted him for so long began to lift, replaced by something else. Pride. So, yeah. After the press conference, they walked through the courthouse garden. Spring flowers had begun to bloom, bringing color back to the world. Liam stopped beside a bench and picked up the morning's newspaper. The headline read, Whistleblower Robert Daniels posthumously honored for courage in exposing criminal network. Dad always told me that doing the right thing matters more than doing the easy thing, Liam said, running his fingers over his father's photo in the paper. I used to think he died because he made a mistake, because he got caught up in something bad. Diana sat beside him watching as he carefully folded the newspaper. Diana sat in the law school lecture hall, her laptop open and ready. At 34, she was older than most of her classmates, but their youth didn't bother her. She had experiences they couldn't imagine, and those experiences had led her here. As the professor discussed constitutional law, Diana's mind drifted to the thick manila folder in her bag. It contained newspaper clippings about Robert Daniels's case and the fall of Jonathan Graves's organization. She kept it as a reminder of why she'd chosen this path. During the break between classes, Diana found a quiet corner in the library. She pulled out her phone and smiled at the text from Liam. Ace that test yet? She'd been studying for her first major exam, and Liam had become her unexpected cheerleader. The library's peaceful atmosphere was a far cry from the chaos they'd lived through months ago. Here, surrounded by law books and eager students, Diana felt a different kind of purpose taking shape. She wasn't just fighting against corruption anymore. She was learning to prevent it. In her criminal justice ethics class, Diana listened intently as students debated the fine line between law and justice. When her turn came to speak, she drew from her experiences without revealing their personal nature. The system doesn't just fail because of corrupt individuals, she explained. It fails because good people stay silent because whistleblowers get branded as troublemakers, and because too often, justice serves the powerful instead of the truth. Her classmates nodded, but Diana knew they couldn't fully grasp what she'd seen. They hadn't watched a 15-year-old boy carry the weight of his father's death. They hadn't faced down an entire criminal organization to clear an innocent man's name. After classes, Diana met Liam at their usual spot, a small cafe near the courthouse where they'd vindicated his father. Liam had grown taller in the past months, and the haunted look in his eyes had been replaced by something stronger. How's the studying going? He asked, sliding into the booth with his homework spread out before him. 
They'd fallen into this routine. She helped him with algebra, and he quizzed her on legal terms. It's challenging, Diana admitted, but every time I think about quitting, I remember why I'm here. Liam looked up from his textbook. You know, my dad would have liked this, you becoming a lawyer, fighting the system from the inside. He always said change had to come from people brave enough to stand up. Diana watched him work through a math problem, marveling at how far they'd both come. The boy who'd been ready to give up in the snow was now planning for college, talking about studying journalism to expose corruption like his father had. I got an A on my essay about whistleblowers, Liam said proudly, pulling out a paper from his backpack. The teacher said I really understood the moral complexity of the issue. Diana smiled, knowing exactly why he understood it so well. Your father would be proud of you, Liam. You're the bravest person I know, Liam said suddenly, looking up from his homework with earnest eyes. Diana reached across the table and squeezed his hand. We're both survivors, Liam. And now, we're fighters. The halls of Jefferson High School felt different to Liam now. Where he once walked with his head down, shoulders hunched against invisible weight, he now moved with purpose. During lunch breaks, he could often be found in the library, surrounded by younger students who needed help, not just with homework, but with life's harder challenges. My dad used to say that standing up for what's right isn't always easy, Liam told a freshman who was struggling with whether to report bullying. But it's always worth it. The school counselor had noticed the change in him. She'd asked Liam to join the peer mentoring program, recognizing how other students gravitated toward his quiet strength. Many of them knew his story, how he'd lost his father, how he'd helped bring down a corrupt organization, and how he'd found his voice again. Across town, Diana was making waves of her own. Between law school classes, she volunteered at the community center, offering free legal advice to families struggling against systemic injustice. Her military background and recent experiences gave her unique insight into both sides of the law. Sometimes the system works against the very people it's meant to protect, she explained to a group of concerned parents. But that doesn't mean we stop fighting. It means we fight smarter. Word spread about the former agent-turned-law student who actually listened, who understood, who fought for those who couldn't fight for themselves. Local newspapers began running stories about her work, particularly her advocacy for whistleblower protection and anti-corruption measures. One afternoon, as Diana reviewed case studies in her favorite cafe, her phone buzzed with a message from the community center director. The city council was organizing an event to honor local champions of justice, and both she and Liam were to be recognized. When she told Liam about it over their regular study session, he looked uncomfortable. I don't know, Diana. I'm not sure I deserve an award. You stood up against powerful people who were hurting others, Diana reminded him. You helped expose corruption that had hurt countless families. That takes courage. The evening of the event arrived on a warm spring night. The community center's main hall was filled with local leaders, activists, and families whose lives had been touched by Diana and Liam's work. Diana watched proudly as Liam took the podium, no longer the scared boy she'd found in the snow. He spoke about his father's sacrifice, about learning to turn pain into purpose, and about how one person's courage could inspire others to stand up for what's right. When it was Diana's turn to speak, she looked out at the gathered faces and saw not just an audience, but a community united in the pursuit of justice. Her eyes met Liam's in the front row, and she saw in him the same determination that had driven them both to fight against overwhelming odds. After the ceremony, as they stood among well-wishers and supporters, Liam turned to Diana. Remember when you found me that night? I thought my life was over, but you showed me it was just beginning. Diana smiled, watching this young man who had become like family to her. Together, they had transformed their pain into purpose, their fear into strength, and their loss into a legacy of hope for others. Diana sat at her desk, fingers hovering over her laptop keyboard. The morning light filtered through her apartment window, casting a warm glow on the scattered papers and legal textbooks surrounding her. She had been up since dawn, working on an op-ed piece that felt more personal than anything she'd written before. The price of silence? Why we need? 
Whistleblowers, read the working title. Her eyes drifted to a framed photo of Robert Daniels that Liam had given her, a snapshot of him at a community barbecue, his warm smile radiating the kind of genuine kindness that had made him beloved in his neighborhood. She began typing, Robert Daniels wasn't just a whistleblower, he was a father who wanted his son to grow up in a world where doing the right thing mattered more than power or profit. His courage cost him his life, but his legacy lives on in every person who dares to speak truth to power. The words flowed naturally as Diana wove together Robert's story with broader insights about systemic corruption. She detailed how organizations often prioritize self-preservation over justice, how fear silences potential whistleblowers and how this silence perpetuates cycles of abuse and corruption. The system isn't broken, she wrote. It's working exactly as designed by those who benefit from its flaws. Real change requires more than just new laws. It demands a fundamental shift in how we protect those brave enough to stand up against corruption. After several hours of writing and revising, Diana submitted the piece to the Metro Times. Within days, the op-ed went viral, shared across social media platforms, and picked up by national news outlets. Her phone buzzed constantly, with notifications from journalists requesting interviews and activists seeking collaboration. Local radio stations invited her to discuss whistleblower protection. Community organizations asked her to speak at their events. Even some of her law professors shared the article in their classes as a starting point for discussions about ethics and justice. One morning, while Diana was reviewing her class notes at her favorite cafe, Professor Martinez approached her table. The respected civil rights attorney turned teacher carried herself with quiet authority. Her silver-streaked hair pulled back in a neat bun. That was quite an article, Ms. Cooper, Professor Martinez said, sliding into the seat across from Diana. You've sparked quite a conversation in the legal community. Diana straightened in her chair, then thank you, Professor... In fact, Professor Martinez continued, pulling out a manila folder. I have something that might interest you. The law clinic has received a case. A warehouse worker who reported safety violations and was fired in retaliation. Would you be interested in working on it under my supervision? Diana's heart raced as she accepted the folder. Her first real case as a law student. As she opened it and began reading the details, she felt the weight of responsibility not just to this client, but to everything she and Liam had fought for, everything Robert had died for. When do we start, Diana asked, already reaching for her notepad. Professor Martinez smiled. I thought you might say that we meet with the client tomorrow morning. In the winter sun, Diana and Liam walked through Cedar Grove Cemetery, their steps crunching frost-covered grass. She carried white lilies, he, a single red rose. Robert Daniels headstone stood under an oak tree. The inscription read, Robert Daniels, beloved father, truth seeker, hero. Recently cleared leaves revealed gleaming granite. Liam knelt at the grave, his breath visible. Diana's hand rested on his shoulder as they shared comfortable silence. Your father's bravery inspired everything we've done, Diana said reflecting on how Robert's sacrifice had sparked widespread change. Liam placed his rose at the headstone, touching the cold stone. He'd be proud of us, he said firmly, no longer the guilt-ridden teen from months ago. Diana added her lilies beside the rose. She remembered Robert's evidence and his final defiant act. Sunlight filtered through oak leaves above them. Liam's eyes were clear, free of past demons. Walking back, Liam looked skyward, unburdened. He thought of the kids he mentored, proud to share his father's story. I used to think that night was the end, Liam said, but it was just the beginning. We're not running anymore. Diana noted his transformation from guilt to purpose, his commitment to his father's legacy. At the sun-gilded gates, Liam took a final look at the grounds. We're going to keep making a difference, he said with determination. That's the best way to honor him. Diana observed the confident young man before her, so different from the frightened boy she'd rescued. Diana delivered a powerful speech on justice to a packed conference hall, her eyes finding Liam in the third row, no longer the scared boy she'd rescued two years ago. 
She spoke about justice living in daily choices, whistleblowers' courage, and corruption fighters. She shared how a teen's resilience and a father's sacrifice taught her that change requires questioning rules, not following them. Liam watched proudly as Diana discussed their anonymized story, advocating for law enforcement reform and community trust building. We can't fight corruption from outside, she declared. We must change the system from within, supporting those who risk everything for truth. The speech earned a standing ovation led by Liam. Afterward, Diana navigated through admirers, students, prosecutors, and activists, while watching Liam confidently interact with attendees who knew him from the community center. They finally escaped outside where snow was starting to fall. You showed them real courage, Liam said admiringly. We showed them, Diana corrected. Your strength inspired mine. They stepped into the swirling snow so different from the night they'd met. Now it symbolized hope instead of fear. Ready for whatever comes next? Diana asked. Together, Liam replied, as they walked forward, leaving tracks in the fresh snow. If you enjoyed the story of Liam Daniels, I handpicked this next story that you will enjoy. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.